Hello, Beauty News family. Welcome to another wine time with actual wine. Well, and, and a cocktail. I've got a cocktail going on. It's, and a, it's a mix. Look, it's a it's a mix. I'm calling it an apple and black currant teeny. So it's like an apple teeny, mm. but with apple black currant juice and sour apple liqueur, and it's very delicious. Yum, delish. Mine is not wine. It's cider, and yes, I'm drinking it out of a red wine glass, and don't tell me what to do. I would drink wine out of a boot if I wanted to. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you would like to join us for a drinky poos, now is the time to pause the video and go get one, because we're all, we're, we're cheersing tonight. So, uh, we are going to talk about makeup, buying makeup. And whether we would splurge or save if we had to replace our whole collection. Yeah. So the hypothetical is that our whole makeup collection is gone. Poof. Up in a cloud of smoke, basically. Yep. Bye -bye. And now, goodbye, gone. And now we need to replace it. Um, and we're not talking about, like, going ham and buying 20 eyeshadow palettes and 36 foundations like we've already, We've already got <laughs> God <laughs> we're just talking about if we had to pop to the shops and replace a full face of makeup what would we buy and more importantly would we splurge or save on specific steps in our routine mm -hmm. look I think this is going to be a good one because even though we do have fairly similar preferences when it comes mm -hmm. to makeup and makeup brands we do have different skin types now i do we have do now, skin yep. Haley has dry. dry skin so when it comes to base products we might where we used to be very aligned we're going to be quite yep. different but i thought i'd also say that we would like to be doing this podcast together but we're going into lockdown number six in melbourne so i know um, it's gonna be I'm remote actually for a while really I'm actually really disappointed um, that I can't really link lockdown number six to anything that I can meme. I'm sure other people will do it over the next couple of days, but um, at the moment I'm I'm still stuck on lockdown number five and singing the mumbo number five song. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, on my I um, on my sort of private Instagram, I was posting daily on um, with lockdown number five, and I mm. called it lockdown with like five I've like the band and then I'd yeah, hashtag yeah, yeah. a five song and no one really understood it because no one cares about five but <laughs> yeah what is six? Oh, nothing but I kind of love it I know <laughs> what do we do look at I least don't know the next one will be s club lockdown yes <laughs> s yeah club that's s club seven lockdown yeah, yeah that's I love one. that I love it all right guys so let's start what we're gonna do is actually go through like every step of our makeup routine and we're just gonna have a little chit chat about it yep. we're gonna tell you if we'll splurge or save and the first step is always primer we're not going into skincare it's a crime to not <laughs> it's a it? crime not to prime yeah <laughs> that's no, bullshit <laughs> no, i don't not. i don't subscribe to that bullshit basically mm -mm. Um, yeah, I would skip this step altogether. I wouldn't even buy a primer, to be honest. Um, for me, I just don't personally feel like they're super effective. Um, I, I just feel like, you know, having a really good skincare routine is enough. My, you know, serum and moisturizer and SPF will act as my primed skin, basically. Mm -hmm. And I just go straight in with um, foundation. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Even though I have different skin concerns and sometimes if you have very oily skin, a mattifying primer can help yes. your makeup from slipping and sliding. But I feel like the detrimental effects that a mattifying primer gives you is actually worse than the slippage. Um, it yeah. often makes your makeup look kind of cakey and sit patchy and you end up looking like you've got a funky base um, mm. when, yeah, so I feel like that's worse than oils breaking through and yeah. 
in a different way, I feel like um, with oily skin, if you put too many layers of stuff on your face, you're more inclined to get slippage and movage of your base. The time I would recommend a primer to people is if you have really large pores and you want oh, yeah. to smooth that out. The and pore that, filling yeah, primers, yeah. That's the only time, but generally that pore filling primer will degrade your base. So I would yeah. skip a primer I've got a drawer full of primers. I'm trying to use them, but I hate them. I, yeah, I, I know. I, I never use them. I decluttered I so many and I was like, all right, I've got a manageable amount now. I can finish these. Mate, I haven't even like touched them. I don't Do you know what care. I started doing, Hayley? And this is really bad. Mm -hmm. I've been using them as a foot cream. Well, you know, a lot of them are hydrating. Because they're too Do you slippery have oily on your hands. Feet? And so you may as well put them on your feet. Yeah, fair That's enough. That's how useless I Look, think they are. I will say, I do remember back to um, a specific Becca primer, the mm -hmm. um, mattifying oil control primer from Becca. That was probably one of the very, very few oil control primers that actually worked where i actually yeah. saw that i could get through a day where it it stopped the oils from coming through and destroying my makeup however that was also a bit of a nightmare product to use you had to work really fast with it and you had to be yeah. really careful to only apply the tiniest amount like it had to be perfect so look there are some cases where they have a a place but, um, but in general. Yeah. Yeah. Just generally, yeah. Not for me. It's Not. a crime to push primers on people. That's what I, I agree. That's my I agree. refreshed uh, saying. It is yeah. much, much better to encourage a fantastic skincare routine. That's where I would splurge. Yes. Same. True. True. Okay. okay. Let's talk about foundation. Now, foundation. It's, you've got to have the right one for your skin, don't you? If it doesn't match what's going on with your skin, you're probably going to have a hard time. And for me, this means I would probably splurge simply because one foundation that comes to mind, which I'm hearing reports it's been discontinued, but I'd hunt within the same brand. It's from Shuamora. So mm -hmm. for me, that would obviously be a splurge. Mm -hmm. I want something that's like... Um, medium coverage or low to medium coverage really nice and hydrating doesn't move around too much it's a lot to ask but i do know that shuamora make beautiful foundations and i've had some very good experiences with them so i would splurge and that is a brand i would go to to check out first yeah for me having and i do I, t I totally agree with that i think if you've got dry skin and you need sort of skincare benefits as in like added hydration mm. or um, if you've got aging skin and you want sort of like again hydration maybe serum -y sort of effect some glowy plump base um higher end is the place to go because that requires expensive ingredients that generally yeah. drugstore brands can't afford to put in their products at their price point. For me, being an oily skinned person, and what I actually did earlier this year, I went through all of my foundations, not all of them, majority, I think I tried like 20 foundations, and I tried some from drugstore through to higher end, and I noticed that for what I want from a foundation, which is generally medium coverage, um, something that doesn't like emphasize texture and lines and whatnot um, and that doesn't break down easily with oil so it can have some oil coming through but it doesn't separate and pull apart with oils I yeah. found that you can get awesome things from the drugstore and awesome things from high end and if you applied it on me and I didn't know what I was using I wouldn't be able to guess I found that overall yeah. my collection was pretty good and they all did very similar things. So um, I know you can't get this in Australia anymore, but if I wanted something slightly dewy, L'Oreal, yep. fucking awesome. Revlon Pro Color Glow. Stay. I love like, that fucking Pro Glow. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> it's these discontinued. Are awesome. This is yeah. awesome on like all skin types. This is awesome yep. if you want something that doesn't move and budge at all, but still mm. looks quite... I'm like, 
I would go to Chemist Warehouse or Priceline in Australia, look for a 50% off sale or a 40% off sale. Oh and buy, yeah. And buy something like this because for my yeah. skin, even at 35, I feel like this is not too much different from what you can get from, I don't know, like Estee Lauder or, or Estee Lauder. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. like Estee yeah. Lauder yeah. double wear um, and versus this, like if you did half, half, you wouldn't tell much difference. So you know, I would you... argue yeah. that the Rev Revlon is better than Estee Lauder Double Wear. Like, I think it's it's nicer. I think it it looks nicer on the skin. So yeah, yeah. and I think the point that you make about um, going to Priceline or Chemist Warehouse when they're having a sale is a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, that's like <sighs> I probably would actually start there if at the time when my collection disappears, mm -hmm. if they had a sale, I'd probably run over there and, you know, get two for the price of one Yeah, and see how I go for a couple of weeks before running off to Shuamora to see if they can fix me. <laughs> yeah, what I would probably do as well is run to, yeah, if Chemist Warehouse was having 50% off all makeup, which they do multiple times a year, I would go and I'd buy a bunch of stuff there and then I'd insert the sort of splurge items as I go, like over yep. time, I'd be like, I want this fancy product. Let's add that in. But I'd probably start with some real basics from uh, like drugstore brands. And also in Australia, drugstore brands are a lot more expensive than what they oh, are they in are. the US. But you are a fool if you buy them full price. You are mm -hmm. an absolute fool. They are more we in line with the US price if you buy it, look out for sales, which happen often. Yeah. Um, and mm. we've got a lot of sort of big department stores that stock all these drugstore brands. And there's always going to be one of them that has at least 30 to 40, often 50% off. So if you're paying full price for your Revlon Colors Day, just wait and buy two when it's 50% off because that's yeah. that's how I do it and that's how I recommend it to everyone. I feel like anyone that walks in and there's no sale and they spend a lot of money on makeup, I'm like, what are you doing? You, what? Just yeah. stop. Put it back. Yeah. Come back next week when it's 40 to 50% off. Just, yeah. Don't pay full price. Yeah. No, no I agree. Definitely when it comes to drugstore stuff, um, there is absolutely no reason at all to pay full price in Australia because yeah. if Priceline isn't having a sale Chemist Warehouse is mm -hmm. or another like Amcal Pharmacy is having a sale or, or something like Big that. Big W or Target or yeah, Kmart or Coles or, or, yeah, yeah. or Woolworths or yeah. so it's always So literally somewhere. you just have to keep walking in stores until you find the one that has a sale currently on Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. That's true. That's pretty much how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about concealer? I'm personally the same with concealer. Um, at the moment, I'm a little bit torn. My all time favorite that I've used probably a dozen tubes of, and I've got backups of, I haven't opened them because I'm currently have a fancy NARS one open, but my Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. This that is, is like, so good. It's like better than it's Tarte Shape Tape. It's better than- It's amazing. It's so better than so many other concealers on the market. And this yep. is my, um, sort of bench benchmark for concealers if a I concealer agree. isn't better than this and it's more expensive it's no good i will never repurchase it never yep. repurchase it because i agree this is something that if you need setting and you need um coverage under the eyes this is really good um if you've got very very creasy under eye area or very very dry under eye area i wouldn't i i, I yeah no. I, I it works for you i I would disagree because yeah. that stuff, okay, if you aren't prepping your base well, True. then maybe you might have issues. This is when a hydrating primer might come into play. Or just, <laughs> just in case. Just a nice sort of good eye, eye cream. cream. A really yeah. good eye cream. That fa uh, that concealer is still one of my favorites and yeah. I'm dry as fuck I'm crepey I'm dry under the eyes I've got fine lines when I smile I look like a sharpe under my eyes now which is really fun um that concealer is fantastic yeah and I also it's love this I always have best. one in my handbag because um if I am breaking down my foundation throughout the day and I'm getting oily I blot I take a little bit of this 
put it where it's breaking down, tap it in, powder it, and my base looks like I've just applied it. This is, yeah, this is where I'd go. Currently, what I have open is a NARS one, so the matte one in the pot. I really like that. It's a really beautiful effect. Um, but I don't feel like you need to spend 44 Australian dollars on a concealer when you can find this on sale for under $10. This is where I would I would go time and time again, and yeah. I have, and I do, and I love it. I'm the same. On my list, I had Save, and I had the Fit Me concealer down, but... Again, it's one of those things where I'd go buy one just so I know I've got a really good, reliable concealer in my stash. And then I would be pretty damn ready to go out and look for something a little bit more splurgy um, to try like one of the 50,000 concealers that people rave about and are on my wish list. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I do think you can get some beautiful concealers um, if you do splurge, but... I think the hardest part about that is really finding the one that works for your body mm -hmm. because there's something about like, you know, concealer and foundation, getting something that works with like your body chemistry, if we mm -hmm. can call it that, that is actually the hardest part. But once okay. you find that, that's, that's when you're on to a winner. But that Fit yeah. Me concealer is bomb. I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's my, a one I would buy as well. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, let's move on to powder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we're old ladies. <laughs> and, and in the YouTube are, world, yes, we're, we're in the YouTube ladies. world. Yeah. Um, okay, for me, I I would splurge on a powder. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even consider going and checking out like a, a cheaper powder at the moment. Like Kat mentioned, she did a thing testing out all of her foundations um, and I'm currently doing my powders. And what I found with my cheaper powders is that while some of them are really good and I remember loving them when I had mm -hmm. like oily skin and not dealing with fine lines and stuff like that, they were amazing, perfect. But I find now that a lot of them can really emphasize the things that I don't want to emphasize. So mm -hmm. fine lines, they can look quite heavy on my skin, um, especially because now I use more like moisturizing or hydrating foundation. So you use a lot of powder to set them and all of a sudden you're looking really cakey. And what I found is with my more expensive, more refined, higher end powders, and mostly falling into the category of loose powders, which mm -hmm. aren't my favorite, really. I think they're a bit more difficult and messy to use. Um, but they are the ones that are I'm finding I get the best results with. So yeah. I would splurge. I, I would I would agree. I would splurge. But like you said, um, I think powders are one of those areas where depending on your age and your skin... Um, mm. you can go really cheap and nasty when you're quite young and your skin's nice yeah. and plump and you don't have texture issues or lines or whatnot. Um, but then as you get older, it is definitely better to invest because I do feel like even though for me, I can go quite cheap with, um, my foundation and my concealer, what can ruin things is if I set my base with a really bad powder and it ends mm. up making things look patchy and just chunky and not nice. So I feel like to make everything sort of set and look smooth and come together, a nice powder on me is worth the splurge. And like mm. you said, if you if you use a loose powder and you get one that's fairly large, like say 30 grams, it's gonna last mm. you months and months of they use. They do. They yeah, really so, do. so it, is, it is for me worth the investment and I'd much prefer to have one good powder that I can rely on than three or four shitty powders that frustrate the heck, heck out of me and only work with some foundations and some concealers, which I've experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, and if we move into colored face products, I kind of have the same sort of vibe. So mm -hmm. if we look at, let's start with bronzer, because that's one that <laughs> you use yeah. a lot of. Um, I would... Oh, okay. 
I would splurge on a bronzer and I know that I want a very very specific bronzer and if I can't get this specific one because I already know it's limited edition I'm gonna go on the hunt for something similar. Is so it the NARS me, one? It, yes <laughs> it's the NARS cream bronzer. Yeah that's I, a good bronzer. I love that bronzer. It's so it beautiful. And I find these days, um, because my skin is drier, I really, really appreciate more layers of cream rather than more layers of powder. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to use creams basically all over my base and then just set it with a translucent powder. So mm -hmm. yeah, the NARS cream bronzer is the one that I would want. And if I can't get it, I would go hunting for something similar. Yeah, look, that's a really good bronzer. And I, as an oily skin person, look, I do see the benefit of having cream bronzers. I feel like they can incorporate in a nicer way or a more natural way with your base. So it can look a lot more natural. And that particular one works really well over matte foundation. It doesn't need to be like a dewy foundation. So it's a really nice one. For me personally, I think I would prefer a powder as my only bronzer and use a cream bronzer occasionally when I sort of want to you know spend a little bit more Do time and, and yeah, yeah and, yeah, and yeah, fiddle yeah. with my, my makeup a little bit more on a daily basis I'd prefer a powder um yeah and this is going to go for bronzer blush and highlighter which we'll be talking about next uh, again similar to the face powder I feel like as you get older you should invest more money into it because they will, especially highlighters or things that have shimmer in them. If you get something that's not very refined and not designed mm -hmm. to like smooth over lines and like hide texture, the cheaper you go, the nastier it's going to look on your skin. Mm -hmm. So if you're young, you can definitely go cheap and nasty. But as you get older, I feel like you need to go more refined and uh, spend a little bit more money. Um, also, if you try, if you prefer something matte, I feel like you can get away with something cheaper, like a matte blush. Uh, yes, um, I agree. But a, but a shimmery blush, even though there are some nice cheaper ones out there, I think consistently you get nicer things from higher end brands. Also, if you've ever tried to use up a bronzer, a blush or highlighter, they're a long-term commitment. They are. Oh my God, they take yeah, forever. Yeah, so I've had blushes like... that have lasted longer than my first like three relationships combined. So yes. um, you may as well spend the $50 on a blush knowing that you mm. love the color, that you love how it looks because you're probably gonna use it every day for two years. So I yeah. feel like that's worth the splurge and that's the same with bronzer and highlighter. I really like the Marc Jacobs Omega bronzer and that's like yeah, bang that is... buck. That's a massive yeah. one. I love NARS Laguna, just the, the powder mm. one. I love the cream, obviously. Um, and I really also love uh, Benefit Hula. I love mm. Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil bronzer or the, yeah. no, Milk Chocolate, Milk Chocolate bronzer. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. There's so many in that sort of price range. So not luxury, but like mid mid range. Mid range, um, yeah. That, that work really, really well on me and I can use all the way through to the end. So. I wouldn't be super picky with which one I go for, but that would be the sort of yeah, sort of yeah that's, brands I'd go for. That's a good point. They are all really, really nice powder bronzers, mm -hmm. and I own, I think I own all of them except for the Too Faced one, mm -hmm. and I like them all, and I would very, very happily purchase repurchase them all to be fair but the the nars cream is like cream of the crop yeah for that's me. like that's um, like a, a really nice red lipstick for me like it's it, yeah yeah it's special it's, it works and it's, it's, it's great but it's a little yeah. bit little bit special it's like putting a little bit of glitter yeah, on yeah. your eye it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a little bit special it's like, it's like it's like stylishly merry eyeshadow yes yes it is it is <laughs> yeah. just like that that's really yes sure. <laughs> um when it comes to blush, I actually found this one a little bit difficult because I I like a really low pigment blush because blush on me it just doesn't it doesn't really suit my like mm -hmm. face shape. So when I put it on if it's on too heavy, it accentuates parts of my face and it it just looks a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Um so I I was struggling because I would want something I probably want a cream um, 
I would want something that, like I said, low pigmentation. Um, but also I want something small. And actually something does come to mind. Mm. And it's a Japanese brand, Can Make. Oh. They make these really cheap little cream blushes in really cool colours. And they're nice. I would probably see if I could find one of them. For me personally, I... I don't know where I'd really go for blush because there's no real one blush that stands out as being like, this is the best range of blush to yeah. me. Um, but I one agree. place, and people are going to come out with their pitchforks because we're not, we don't ever pretend to be cruelty free makeup oh, users. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in beauty news, we do like to flag when things are vegan and cruelty free for people who are interested um yeah but i one area that look one brand that i feel like does blush overall fairly decently is mac yeah um, mac i knew you were gonna say it. Yeah, yeah what i'm wearing today under my highlighter um is one of their uh glow play oh blush. they're beautiful yeah they're like the putty ones that are like yep. cream to powder and they look good in all scenarios they also have really nice baked ones they have just pressed pan ones matte and shimmery so um it's sort of like depending on what you want mac have most of it except for maybe really good liquid yep. and like cream ones like straight up cream ones yeah um yeah so i'll probably go somewhere there and just find one like you isn't too imposing and a color that i can wear with every makeup and i feel Everything. like it's worth yeah. a splurge because yeah if you use a full blush it takes like two years to use it up so oh, it i does. like i yeah, know the money's yeah. worth it yeah i look and if if my whole collection was gone all of a sudden one thing i would not do is buy fifty thousand blushes no i'd buy maybe two like a matte one yeah. like a shimmery one yeah, oh, and maybe 100%. like a cream one maybe like three and that'd all be the same tone yeah. of like peachy yeah, nude would but they'll just have different levels of finish. The finish would be different. Yep. Yep. Definitely. For sure. I could get away with a blush duo for the rest of my life and be happy. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a big blush duo will literally take you to the grave. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's pretty much that's true. The, the end of that story. Yeah. Um, now highlighter. So Kat mentioned like when it comes to bronzer blush and highlight, she would splurge. I 100% agree with her and I'm just going to get straight to the point here. I agree ex with exactly what Kat said about it's really important to um, find the right sort of formula, something that complements what's going on with your skin as you start to get older when it comes to highlight because highlight does exactly what it says it's going to do. It highlights and if you put it over something that's problematic like when you smile and you get those fine lines up around your eye and if you're highlighting in that area it just makes it even more obvious mm -hmm. um so finding a highlight that helps to sort of complement your skin while not you know accentuating those issues a lot that's important that's mm -hmm. like to me number one rule um and i already have the exact highlight i would buy in mind it's NARS Fort de France. It's the I most beautiful highlighter. fucking highlighter. That's I love such it a good so highlighter. much. Fuck. It's I'm, just so You reminded me of it before and I was just like, <laughs> now I want to redo so my nice. makeup and just yeah, 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 yeah. put that on my it's face. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's very, really very complimentary. It's not going to work for everyone. It's not an every person, like every skin tone sort of highlighter. It is definitely a white girl highlighter. But the formula of it and the way that it sits on the skin and the the tone of it is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But it's also not so subtle that you're like, oh, give me more. Yeah. You can put on a tiny bit for a little bit of glow or you can put on an extra layer or two thinly without it looking chunky and heavy mm -hmm. and get that beautiful like... Yeah, it's gorgeous bitch wearing highlighter yeah you can get deeper shades in that range though so even though that you particular can. shade is more of a white girl yes basic one um you can get deeper ones yeah, yeah i agree with you i love that one i would i'd probably go straight there and give that one a crack um but i do also want to flag that yeah again if you're younger 
you can just grab some oh, fucking makeup anything. revolution piece of shit that you can swatch you and go, chalk. oh my God, it's so <laughs> metallic. You can see it from the, the moon. Um, and you can put that on. And even though you're probably yeah. going to look a little bit overdone, it probably won't look super bad. Whereas once you do hit your, you know, mid to late 30s into 40s, 50s, 60s, you have to be a lot more restrained with the highlighters you, you use. And that doesn't mean that you can't have fun. Like I decided today today to wear one of the, my most probably subtle looking highlighters when you swatch it, but it does give you a gorgeous glow without it, it being beautiful. like, yeah. I'll show you which one I'm using. You, you have this one as well. Oh, oh, Laura Mercier. I love that one. That yeah, is so actually really. One. And if yeah, you swatch yeah. it, you're like, Matt it just looks like a powder it, is it the matte radiance highlighter yeah matte radiance baked yeah. powder oh. in highlight 01 and Mate, if you swatch I that's remember, iconic I remember, yeah i remember swatching it in store and being like that's the most boring shit ever it looks like powder like it just looks like a face powder it's beautiful but someone recommended it and was like no buy it and try it on and at the time it was when laura mercier was cheaper to buy in australia than it was in the u.s yes yeah, and I yeah. was like, fuck it, I'm going to buy it. It's actually a good deal buying it in store in Australia, full price. And I bought it and I have not regretted it ever. And if I was to recommend, if this tone suited people, which it is, again, it's like a light shade, so it's not going to suit everyone. But yeah, if, yeah. this is the type of highlighter that if my mum came to me, she's 62, and if she said, what highlighter do I use? Because all of a sudden yeah. I have some, in, I, I'm inspired to look shiny. I'd be like, this is the type for you. So there's always a highlighter for people to look a little bit more glowy. You just have to go a little bit more expensive as you um, age, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, I think it's worth splurging. And I actually think when it comes to highlighters, like if you've never been into it and you're, a little bit like older like we are and you are wanting to buy one I would definitely go back and look at the cult products that have mm -hmm. been popular for like five six seven eight nine ten years because yeah. the ones that have been on the shelf for that long they're there for a reason yeah. like that Laura Mercier one it is mm -hmm. so good it's yeah. amazing yeah also, if I'm looking a bit flushed, guys, I'm really hot and I can't remove my top because I'm not wearing anything underneath. So, well, I'm wearing a bra, but so well, yeah, if I'm could. looking a little bit like flushed, um, it's you not look that... like you're glowing. Yeah, let's just say it's that. It's probably I'm glowing because of the alcohol. <laughs> I'm already done. I need to make another one, but I'm currently pantsless because yeah, yeah. it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not winter here. It's uh, I mean, it's not summer here. It's yeah. winter. She's just. I don't know why my house is so hot right now. Clustered. It's just yeah. It's just too hot. It's a light. So blame it's the hot. lights and. Um, Look, I'm the in the alcohol. garage, but it's fine. The alcohol. <laughs> sort yeah, the alcohol's keeping me problem. toasty. That's for sure. I can still feel all of my appendages, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Before we continue with this week's episode, we do have some sponsors. Sometimes it rains on your birthday. Sometimes a line for coffee wraps around the building. Sometimes petrol is expensive. Sometimes life stinks. The good news, you don't have to because Native has your back. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. You probably already know about Native's legendary aluminium-free deodorant, but have you tried their body wash, toothpaste, or their brand new mineral-based sunscreen? Native's on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by putting the care in self-care with products carefully made to work against odor that are made with simple ingredients and smell great. You can even build Build your own personalized product bundles, mix and match three of your favorite scents and keep them on rotation so you have something for every occasion. And don't forget to check out their limited edition summer road trip collection featuring four gorgeous scents plus the return of the rose scent which is retiring soon on the 23rd of August. It's official. I switched to native deodorant a year ago. There we go. I've been using it for a full 12 months through winter, through summer in Australia, and I still really enjoy it. The current scent that I'm using is cucumber and mint. It's a nice, soft, subtle, sweet, but slightly fresh scent. So it's great for all year round. And of course, if you don't like fragrance, 
there's an unscented version. Stay fresh, stay clean with Native by going to nativedeo.com slash beautynews or use promo code beautynews at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash beautynews or use promo code beautynews at checkout for 20% off your first order. Ana Luisa's mission is to bring beautiful, stylish jewelry to consumers while maintaining sustainability and minimizing their impact on the environment. They offset their carbon emissions related to the product's life cycle, minimize excessive waste by creating limited batches, and use recycled materials when possible. Their range is diverse and features a great selection of timeless and fashionable items ranging from earrings, rings, necklaces, and bracelets, plus they have fine jewelry offerings as well that are affordable while maintaining high quality and longevity of the pieces. Ana Luisa also released new collections every Friday with pieces starting at just $39 and they offer a 365 day warranty on all pieces. I'm really happy with my Ana Luisa items. I've actually just made another order for their CS Silver safety pin earrings. It's a little twist on a hoop earring and it reminds me of the 90s. I really can't wait to receive these. I kind of love them. I absolutely recommend checking out Ana Luisa at analuisa.com slash beauty news. I love them. Their pieces starting at just $29. You can get 20% off on top of that with their summer sale. I absolutely recommend them. They're a great brand making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. Go check out analuisa.com slash beauty news. That's Ana Luisa, A N A L U I S A dot com slash beauty news for 20% off. Aurelius Fine Jewelry, made in New York City, founded by women for women. Pieces range from classic to statement to completely original. Aurelius Gold feels substantial, and because it's all real gold, you don't have to worry about taking it off to shower, to do the dishes, or any of your other day to day chores because it's jewelry for life. And all Aurelius pieces come with a lifetime warranty because they know it lasts. Orate is ethically made in New York City. Their gold is never mined and their gemstones and diamonds are also certified conflict free. So everyone can shop with a sparkling conscience. Orate also gives back and supports various causes ranging from environmental to social causes empowering women, youth and children. We've had our Orate pieces for I think over a year now and they are still in my ears. I literally have never taken them out. They've worn beautifully. There's no discoloration. I have had no irritation. I have the mini gold bar earrings in 14 karat white gold, and Kat has the midi gold bar earrings in 14 karat yellow gold. They're ever so slightly bigger than mine, and obviously a different kind of metal. Uh, they're great quality, affordable jewelry pieces, and I really, really love them. Besides transparent pricing, Orate has also now teamed up with Klarna to make their items even more accessible to everyone. Basically, using Klarna, you can shop now and pay over time. It's just a more flexible way to get what you want from Orate. So for 15% off your first Orate purchase, go to oratenewyork.com slash beauty and use promo code beauty. That's Orate New York. A-U-R-A-T-E New York dot com slash beauty and use promo code beauty at checkout for 15% off your first order. Let's move into eyes and yep. we'll start at the start. Let's talk about eye primer. Splurge! Yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> I, I feel like initially I was like, uh, save. Then I was like, hang on a minute. Can I think of a single drugstore eye primer that I know of that I actually like and no. think is worth the money? And the answer was, as Kat just said it so eloquently, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. No, I would I would splurge. And you know what? I, I know which one I would buy. Mm -hmm. Just as like a, you know. Yeah. I know it works for me. I go get MAC Painterly Paint Pot. <laughs> <laughs> Twinning! <laughs> See, I had two listed, right? I had two listed yeah, yeah. for different reasons. And look, I agree with you. Firstly, I feel like, unlike your foundation, an eyeshadow base does make a world of difference to your eyeshadow. Oh, yeah. Um, if you suffer from your eyeshadow wearing off throughout the day, looking less pigmented, creasing, looking patchy, mm. but when you put it on, it looks perfect, 
It's because your primer is shit. Like, let's, or you're yeah. not using one. That's all it yeah. is. And I've seen mm -hmm. such a huge turnaround from when I never used to use eyeshadow primer to when I started using it religiously. And it's to the point where I would prefer to just use primer on my eyes, like a MAC painterly yeah. paint pot, and no yeah. eyeshadow, then apply eyeshadow with no primer. Like, eyeshadow mm -hmm. without a primer is, is not even a thing for me. It's like, there's no, oh, there's no yeah, point. No, no, it's a waste no. of it's a waste no. of eyeshadow. So yeah. so I do agree that you know you really need a good primer. For me, I love Mac Paintly Paint Pot, and I love it for two reasons. One, it's a good base. Um, mm. I do have uh, dermatitis on my eye, so I do have red dry patches. So I do need something that blanks out the lid, which that does do. But it also doubles as a cream eyeshadow. So on yes. low maintenance days where I want to cover the um, dermatitis that I have. Concealer doesn't usually do it because it creases. Um, mm, yeah. Foundation doesn't do it because it creases, but a base like MAC Painterly Paint Pot, you can use it as a cream eyeshadow on its own. So that's a double whammy. So I feel like it's really, really versatile. And I know from experience, I think in the past I've used up two, maybe three MAC Paint Pots and they take I'm not shitting you a whole year of daily use. So <laughs> when do. you spend your money, you are getting 365 days of application, which I yep. think is very good value. If you yep. have issues with oily eyelids or you have issues with um, makeup fading and you have tried something like MAC Painterly Paint Pot and just does not work, the best one I have tried is the NARS eyeshadow primer comes in a clear and there's also tinted versions. And again, you can use those sort of as a cream eyeshadow, but they, I don't think they work as good as MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Um, but I do feel like they, um, they work better as like bunch proof eyeshadow bases. So right. those are the two I'd go for, but they're similar price points, but I would never go for, um, I don't know, fucking, Essence. The one I that, personally wouldn't. Oh hell no 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 I no no. It'd be I know, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go. Yeah, I wouldn't even go to places like the Too Faced Shadow Insurance or anything. No. Like no. that. I just don't think that they're um, they're not really on par with what I personally look for in an eye primer. Basically, I agree. I haven't tried the Nars one, but I have heard good yeah, things about it, so it might yeah. have to go on the list. This is why I don't like to talk about makeup too much when I'm fucking drinking because that's true. Hey, hey, hey! No, I, I do have, have a, a mini. I do have a mini of the original um, that oh, okay, Simon yeah. gave me from a beauty loot box that I haven't opened it, so I can give that to you, so you can have a play. Hallelujah! Put that I love on the that. list. That sounds put that great. On the list. Yeah, I'll put yeah. that on the list. Sharing is caring. Okay. Um, let's get into the big one. <laughs> this is a very, very big one. Eyeshadows. Yep. The <laughs> For starters, what I would not do is buy more than one fucking palette. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> not, not at least for like the first three months of replacing my eyeshadow collection. No, I agree with that. But I would, I would splurge. I would 100% yep. splurge. But to um, a point. Is... To oh, a point. Yeah. We're not talking feel... about Pat McGrath no. splurge. No, no, that is Don't... that is not worth it. Don't get splurge. it twisted. No. Yeah, I do feel like eyeshadows and I've said this a few times and I like I will I will die saying this. Eyeshadows they sort of peak. So if you they look peak, at it like yeah. a graph and say this is like cheap, luxe, middle of the road, like middle mid-range they mm -hmm. peak and then they start to yeah. go down the more you spend because I feel like the formulations, they can't get much better than the mid-range ones anyway. I agree. So you end up just I spending agree. more money on the packaging and the marketing and the brand name. So once you do get into the um, Pat McGrath's and the Natasha Denona's and you're spending like hundreds of dollars on a palette, mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's that much better than a middle, middle of the range price point and when I talk about yeah. middle of the range I'm not just saying Too Faced or Mac or nothing middle of the range is also indie brands they're not cheap yeah but they're also not yeah, luxe. Yeah, yeah. so I sort of yeah. group all of that in the same sort of um grouping uh yeah in my in my head what brand would you yeah. go for because I reckon we Look, might be on the same page yeah I would go I would go Nas or Viseart 
because that's exactly what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Now the reason why I chose these brands is because I like their formula, mm -hmm. which is the big tick. Um, but also both brands offer palettes with smaller pan sizes mm -hmm. and that is actually something that I would actively search for if I needed to buy an eyeshadow palette because I had none. I yeah. would be looking for a palette that has smaller than average pan sizes because mm -hmm. I know how long it takes to use up eyeshadow and um, you know uh, the thing is about eyeshadow palettes is once you have one it's like getting a tattoo when you have one <laughs> you need more yeah. and uh, it's very very easy to get into you know a buying or inspiration sort of spree with eyeshadow palettes and one goes into two goes into four goes into ten and suddenly you have literally a lifetime supply of eyeshadow palettes, but it's only been six months of yeah, buying. I think the issue with eyeshadow palettes and the reason why they're so um, addictive is because they, uh, they're trendy color stories. So unlike yep. your foundation shade, unlike the blush that suits you perfectly, unlike the bronzer that suits you perfectly, you don't yep. really change your base products because you find what suits you. When it comes to eyeshadows, you can know roughly what colors suit your coloring, but also it's very, very um, driven by trends. Like what is yes. a trendy color story of the time so you can start with your basic nude eyeshadow palette that which is what i'd probably go for i was thinking maybe like a vizier nude ish palette and yep. then i would probably go for like a duo or a quad from nars just for like mm -hmm. the every day and then dip into yep. the vizier for a bit of like something they're the kind of two options that i would personally like to go for um if i had to replace my eyeshadows um but then of course you do go it's autumn plums are in i got to add plums so it is one yep. of those things that you do want to build on so i yep. would start with nudes and a nice variety of nudes in a nice formula and the good thing is Viseart and nars they're they're not cheap but i also feel like for what they are they're very flattering and again as you get older and you have like I don't know, pigmentation on your eyelids, creasiness on your eyelids, droopiness on yep. your eyelids, eczema on your eyelids. You do want something that sort of glides on and hides a lot of those issues. And I find that those Absolutely. two brands do that beautifully. Whereas often you can go for trendy brands, um, you know, the, you know, let's say the dubious place and all that kind of stuff. And I don't feel yeah, yeah. like, I feel like they're more color and statement more than flattering application. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so it just depends on what you're after, but I do feel like the, that middle price point, which is more of a splurge than drugstore. Like drugstore eyeshadows, I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. I prefer oh, to not wear eyeshadows. I wouldn't eyeshadows. even, yeah, same. I, would I prefer to walk around just with my, my MAC it. paint pot in painterly and my <laughs> yeah, eyes all same. day and be like, fuck it. From lash line to brow bone, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> wouldn't even, no, nah, I wouldn't even consider it. Um, look. Over the years, I have used a lot of drugstore eyeshadow palettes, and whenever one falls into my lap, I try it out again, thinking, hey, maybe this is the year where Revlon or Essence or some other brand stepped up their game and they've got a new formula. No. No. It never happens. Nothing changes. It's the same old story. They're rubbish. It's just They're just rebranded with a different name, so people are like, oh, but this is yes. the blah 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 range it's different from yeah, yeah. two years it's ago different. when they brought out the same not... looking thing no it's the same it's the same shit different, honestly different name. drugstore brands could probably overtake the makeup industry if they just made decent fucking eyeshadows but a lot of them won't because they're owned by these big umbrella companies that also own a lot of these mid-range and high-end brands yeah yep. so they want to keep them in place their... yeah they put their good formula in those mid-range brands. You're so much better off saving your money. If you can't afford mid-range, mid stop buying drugstore, save yeah. your money, and just get one mm -hmm. good mid-range palette that like really stands out to you. And yeah. another thing, when it comes to like, you know, if I was expanding on my eyeshadow collection, 
like Kat, I would go nudes to start with. And if I wanted some colour, I know people are going to want to flog me when they hear this come out of my mouth. I would buy a Morphe palette. Generally, I'm, in day-to-day -day use, people don't wear fluoro pinks. A lot of people no. do. So I'm not saying, like, if you're the type of person that wants to wear rainbow every day, invest mm. in your rainbow palette. And... Absolutely. Vizian has some great colourful matte palettes, so you can definitely, you know, look yep. at those kind of brands as well. But for your average consumer who wears mainly makeup to work and yeah. likes to or out with dabble, the girls, or, dabble with yeah. a bit of fluoro pink, you don't need the Huda Neon palette. You can get it from no. a Morphe palette and the same effect and a lot cheaper. So yep. I probably wouldn't go to Morphe personally. Not that I have a problem with going to Morphe, I just can't see myself wanting anything that much from color. Morphe. See, yeah. look, one. I'd, I'd actually specific... prefer to go to ColourPop, I reckon. Fair. No, that's fair enough. One specific palette comes to mind for me that I still enjoy to this day, and my deepest, sincerest apologies to everybody when this comes I out know of what my it's mouth. Be. But that Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fucking love it. I, I love it. I actually sort of am jealous that you have it and I don't because it does have some nice colours. Some of the purples in there, I'm I like, hold oh, your horses, I want it. There's something about the way like the purples and the oranges and the pinks and the reds and all that sort of like blend in together. I'm just like... Yes, they're super I love vibrant it. and I nice colors too. Yeah, they're also, just gorgeous. Yeah, if you if you do start delving into re like and you want better quality colored products, you don't want to just mm. have like your ColourPop nine pan palette because you're like I've decided that green is my color is my everyday yeah, yeah. vibe. I would delve into indie brands. That's when I would start looking yes. at the Cleonas at the. Um, uh, Sydney Grace Cosmetics, all those kind of brands. I'd start looking at the indie brands because they do color better than pretty much any other brand out there. But you do yeah. have to be careful because they get quite expensive and they're quite fragile as well. So if you're mm -hmm. happy to look after them and not take them traveling and treat them like they're precious um, and spend quite a lot of money on them, uh, indie brands is where I'd end up going if you want some fun textures and colors in a good yeah. quality formula. Yeah, that's fair enough. If I was going to buy like multi chromes or like really sort of special texture eyeshadows, I would 100% go indie. I wouldn't even think twice about anything mainstream yeah. because it, yeah. they're just not, not they're as, not, they're not skip with the times. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Indie definitely has a place. 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about eyeliner, whether it be a pencil or a liquid or a gel or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I would, okay, I would splurge and save. So yeah. my liquid eyeliner, something that I use to create my wings, I would just go buy the Maybelline Master Precise Wing Liner, fucking whatever, and I would get that shit 50% off and I would be happy. Um, but when it comes to a pencil, I would want NARS Via Veneto because that is like the only thing that lasts in my waterline. And yeah. that that is like, hands down, that's all I need. And that's all I yeah. need at this stage in my life. They're the that's ones fair. I like. Look, yeah. if I was to go a liquid, I agree with you. I'd just go Maybelline. Fuck it. Also, yeah. mine dry out before I even get to finish they them do. anyway. They... So you may as well fair. get them drugstore in half price because um, you don't get the longevity and the value out of spending more money on it yeah. in my opinion um i tend to avoid liquid eyeliners mainly because they can bleed quite easily on my eyes and sort of mm. i get quite watery eyes so if i was to go a wing i would use a gel and that's where i'd use mm. i would splurge and i would use mac fluid line um mm. or i would use an inglot uh gel liner um they both are very different and depending on what I want, I would, you know, if I just wanted black tracks from MAC, like just a black eyeliner, I would, I would go to MAC. I've used up at least two fluid lines and I can use them from start to finish. They take me like yes. two years, They're really but they good. do not dry out. They do not dry out until the very, very yeah. end. They do not dry out. So they stay creamy. They stay nice quality for years so it's a really great investment and that they're the only gel liners i've ever used from start to finish and they have done me well inglot have some really cool colors 
but they do dry yeah. out really fast and you end up having to get yeah. Duralign and rehydrating it and fiddling around with it and the pots are massive so they last 10 years but they they're dry as rocks by the time <laughs> 12 months is up. So yeah, it's if I like wanted you color, open yeah. them three months later and you're like, oh, it's it, a, it is a rock. <laughs> yeah, it's a rock. What happened here? So yeah. it is the opposite of the MAC, um, how they apply, but MAC have mm. such limited colors and their colors aren't very pigmented and great anyway. So I would say yeah, stick with the black and true. brown from MAC and then Inglot go color for the um, colors yeah yeah but with liners like pencil liners i use a lot of pencil liners on my waterline and i am 50 50 when it comes to splurge or save some of my most basic shades like browns olives um even mm. dark teals um navies drugstore is fantastic i love revlon um the color stay cream gel or the creme gel these are fantastic uh, Maybelline tattoo liners are good. Um, Rimmel Scandalize Cole Kajals. I've used these for yeah. a better part of 10 years. And I think I've used, this is on like my fourth brown one. Like I use them all the time. But if you wanted fun colors, I would, you'd have to go to like NARS or this is a Marc Jacobs one in this beautiful sort yeah, of Mark uh, light fun teal ones. color. So um, yeah, I, I do feel like basic, basic. If you go for the right ones, you can find some that last fairly well um but i would start branching out into higher end if i wanted a specific color that you can't get beyond dark blue and brown and black yeah um or but yeah, indie. indie yeah indie yeah. is another place to look if you're looking for like interesting colors especially if you're going for like a statement liner and you want something mm -hmm. fluorescent yeah um or neon like really or glittery punchy. or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't so, go to yeah, drugstore I... for those. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I definitely agree with you there. Um, when you're going into coloured stuff, mm -hmm. you need to spread your wings a little bit more for sure. Yeah. Okay, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is Kat's clothing change. <laughs> Outfit <I'm> change. Too... <laughs> I'm too bloody hot, but I also topped it up. It was too so, hot. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know, we listen, she's... She can't leave me hanging here. It just wouldn't be fair. It's wouldn't true. be wouldn't be I had, the, I had too like, much vodka in the freezer. I couldn't I couldn't say no. Hey, you can't just leave vodka in the freezer. Nah. It's lonely. <laughs> That's true. Even though it's got three times of ice cream in there with it. So. Let's move on to mascara. So what would you do with mascara? See I've gone through a evolution. With my mascara <laughs> usage. When I was younger, I was like drugstore, drugstore, drug high end mascara didn't exist to me. I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? Mascara is like that Maybelline or L'Oreal. Yeah. If you want to go fancy, it's like Max Factor. And then I went into um the benefits and the hourglasses and the NARS and sort of splurging a little bit more. Now I've just come back to the fucking Maybelline. This look, yeah. I haven't opened this. This is in a drawer, it's waiting. Um, this is the Maybelline, the Falsies Lash Lift, and this is the like the ultra black one, which I haven't used before. I've just used the plain one. This is so fucking good. I had to, when I finished one of these, I was disappointed that I was scraping the sides and I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm like, I have to use Benefit Roller Lash like a, like a fool. Whereas previously I really like liked it. Yeah, like I used to really like Benefit Roller Lash, but now I'm like, it's just not good enough. So again, mm. I would save because I feel like in the time that I've taken a break from drugstore mascaras, there have been some leaps and bounds with some cool mascaras. There are also some shit mascaras, yeah. let's be real. But this particular one, the false is lash, lash Lift, the normal one is just the purple bit here. Uh, fucking fantastic. I love it. I will use it. I will use it until I'm dead. Not quite. That's a lie. Yeah. I'll, I'll venture out, but You'll, it's very good. But it'll be a favorite for many years. If I yeah. wore this tomorrow and I died, I'd be like, thank God this was on my lashes when I died. <laughs> <laughs> what are you yeah. wearing now? Uh, fucking roller lash because I'm trying to use it up. It's my project pan. So I'm, am I. I'm like sad every time. I'm like fucking roller so lash. Um, I actually have a question here. Do you yep. think lash chemistry is a thing? People have different hair types, so why yeah. not? What works for my hair, which is clearly 
nothing <laughs> nothing works for my hair um probably wouldn't work for your hair and and vice versa yeah, yeah. so maybe there is something to it and some people have really oily eye eyelids so that could yes migrate to the lashes but i feel like when people have issues with lashes it's usually the shape of their lashes and they yeah. are either need more curl or something doesn't show up but at, mm -hmm. then again like i remember using um too faced better than sex and i had no yeah. issue with it but i feel like it's one of those really polarizing mascaras that flake on some people and don't on others yeah. And I never yep. had issues with flaking. So maybe lash chemistry is like legitimately a, a thing. A thing, yeah. See, I have a theory about benefits mascaras. I'm going off on a tangent here, but bear with me for a second. Um, so I tested out benefits newest mascara earlier in the year, which was the better than, no, uh, better than sex. Uh, their real <coughs> magnet lash. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, to test that out, I compared it to all of the other Benefit mascaras that I own. So the original, They're Real, I used Roller Lash, Bad Gal Bang, mm -hmm. and I think there was another one. I don't know. Anyway, tested them all out, and I didn't see any like marked difference in how they looked on the lashes. But what I did notice was they all have different um, wand types. And that's what's supposed to mm -hmm. give you different effects on the lashes. But I do think that their formulas may differ because I was previously using Bad Gal Bang and I used to transfer on my lower, like mm -hmm. underneath my lower lashes and on my brow bone constantly, whereas uh, Roller Lash doesn't. So I do think that there is a difference in their formula. Mm -hmm. If there's not, and it's just the ones, then there's definitely something going on there with lash chemistry. Yeah, I don't think it would just be the same formula, different ones, because I know yeah. at least for benefit, they spend a lot of um, they do development and resources into creating In new formulas, and that's only because yes. their mascaras are their biggest sellers. So if yes. they bring out a new mascara that they can really push, that is like a multi-million dollar product for them. So they wouldn't yeah. just go, it's the same thing in a different wand because I think they'd be doing their customer base a big disservice doing that. So yes. I, I, I think yeah. they do legitimately have different formulas. Um, but yeah, the only time I've ever had issues with transferring is with certain concealers that stay tacky. 100%. So if yes. I'm wearing a concealer that's like a really hydrating, like one that comes to mind, you know the old school Bobbi Brown one that was in the little pot? Yes. Yeah. That I actually would just... never really loved that. No. That was always problematic. I feel like, yeah, it was always, pro I was too young using it as well, but it was too heavy and too creamy and never set. Yeah. And I always had, um, no matter what mascara I was using, it pretty much would transfer onto it. So I think there's a, a few things happening. Um, yeah. But yeah, for me, um, yeah, I've come back to Maybelline and I, I'm not willing to budge right now. So I'll definitely No, that's save. fair enough. And I'm a, I'm a little bit torn. I could go either way because I I know of a, like a splurge mascara that I love, the Hourglass Caution mm -hmm. Extreme Lash. Love that. I've mm -hmm. got one. I've got multiple back here and I'm like, should open one of them next. But I'm still going on those goddamn Benefit mascaras that I opened. So, you know, there's that. Um... But also, I know that there are so many good um, drugstore mascaras, even with brands as cheap as Essence, which is yeah. like w one of the cheapest drugstore brands that you can buy. They have some amazing mascaras. Yeah, they've got some cult so mascaras, I, yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like I could go either way, and I would probably find myself, you know, picking up one of each just That's because true. For it balance. doesn't hurt. Yeah, exactly. Can't have a completely, like, bougie makeup collection. It's a bit rude. That's true. Nobody yeah. can relate to that. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. And I'll be interested to see how our opinions differ on this, whether they do or don't. Mm -hmm. Brows. I know exactly where I'd go for brows. Okay. Like, I actually... Yeah? I don't. Okay. Here's my issue. Yeah. So issue. I wrote down. I wrote down save. 
because I was like, I've got brows. I just need something to like fill it in a little bit. Yeah. But in saying that, I don't actually know of a drugstore brow product that I feel is personally reliable. But I feel like if I went on the hunt, I could find one. However, it might take me four or five tries before I find something that works. Yeah. So my reasoning for why I would splurge is simply because I feel like the drugstore brow products are always a little bit off with their coloring. Color. I'm that's, always, yeah, yeah. I'm quite cool toned. Um, I'm quite shiny and quite hot and crazy at the moment. Um, but I'm quite cool toned in my hair coloring. I can even wear a gray eyeshadow in my eyebrows. Like that's how cool toned mm. my eyebrows actually are. Okay, and I find yeah. that drugstore always lean to red or orange. And if I put anything that's slightly yeah, warm, fair. it looks like I've got ginger eyebrows compared to the rest mm. of my face. So I have never really found many drugstore brow products that work for my coloring. So I feel like if you are very specific about wanting to find something that it looks natural and, you know, yeah, natural, um, you do have to splurge. Not like Tom Ford fucking brow no, products no, splurge, no. but you do have to go around the Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Benefit, Benefit sort of maybe range. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I also find that uh, for me personally, the brand I will come back to 100% is Benefit and then followed mm. by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Reasoning mm. being, I like to judge a brow range on two products. One, their micro pencil and two, their brow pomade. And for me, yeah. the micro brow pencil from Benefit is just a little bit better than Anastasia Beverly Hills. I feel like it gives a little bit more precise effect because it's a little bit drier and it's never broken on me. I've never yeah. had a precisely my brow pencil break on me, which is amazing. And then when it Fair comes point. to, yeah, when it comes to pomade, even though the Benefit Cabrow can dry out faster because it's a drier formula, it is essentially like a grippier version of a brow powder, whereas Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, their brow pomade is like paint. It's a lot more fluid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. where that block brow trend came in. And that was 100% to blame Anastasia Beverly Hills. So <laughs> it, even, was. Yeah, it was. Even though they have okay mm. products, I much prefer Benefit. And I know I don't really love Benefit overall as a brand, but their brow products I can come back to. They their, are. They're their outstanding. Their brow gel, their clear brow gel. Oh, mate, so good. that is fantastic. I was going to say, because you said that you base a good brow brand or range on two products, a mm -hmm. micro pencil and a pomade. I would say for me it's the micro pencil and some form of setting product, yeah. whether that be a clear gel or a tinted. Yeah. Um, and I have to agree with you that Benefit really is outstanding in that particular yep. part of like a makeup routine. Um, yes, Anastasia Beverly Hills, their claim to fame was brows. Um, and they are very good products. And I don't, you know, it's not that I would, you know, rule them out. But I do think you're actually right that... Mm -hmm drugstore just doesn't really have it going on in the brows yeah if you've got auburn brows yeah fine go drugstore save some money but just from my experience i've never regretted using a benefit brow product well, there's some same. products that aren't the to best be fair, same. but in terms of what it is um i've really i've really enjoyed my and I, i've used probably five or six precisely my brow pencils and i'll keep going back yep. to them because they they're the best They're fan, pencil, They are really good. Yeah. yeah. They are good. I will say, I feel like over the last two years, I've predominantly just used Benefit Brow products. Same. I've dotted in others here and there, but it's mostly been my Benefit stuff. And the, like, the most amount of one brand that I own in my brow stash mm -hmm. is benefit yeah, but they are very generous with pr so that's true you know that's true <laughs> but like i've nice. bought stuff and i'm more than happy to to buy it again. yeah absolutely. i would look for packs yeah. because i'm a bit of a tight ass and i would look for yeah, yeah. christmas sales and stuff yes. um but yeah i yeah splurging on on brow products because brows are quite important for me because i have no brows unless they're tattooed on um 
yeah, it's something that I wouldn't skimp on because it, it can it make skip. or break. Yeah. yeah, it's important. Yeah. Well, it is. It's important. They frame your face. They frame yeah. your eyes. So, yeah, it is important. Okay, let's move on to another very important part. Lips. This is too important this for is me. Like, I feel like I would, I could, is, like, I know. like I can micro get into this in so much detail, but I'll try not yeah, to. Yeah. I'll try to. This is like the the pinnacle of importance for Kat, whereas yeah. for me it's very simple. So I'm going to just say for me yeah. it's a save and I'm going to go for a lip gloss or a tinted balm. I am going to go for something good. Like I don't want no fucking shit that's going to dry my lips out even more it's going to be nude or clear and if I wasn't confident with what I was buying in like at a drugstore level I'd probably you know go buy something from Tarte they make lovely hydrating lip products or Mm -hmm. something like that so I'd go for the more sort of cheaper mid-range um brands but for me it would hands down just be a lip gloss or a lip balm whether it be tinted or like clear yeah look for me if i was to do lip gloss lip balm i would also save because i feel like the difference between a cheap and an expensive one or even a luxe one there's really not that much difference but the price points can vary from like five bucks to 50 bucks so i would definitely save and you can go through lip glosses and lip balms really quickly I recently yep. discovered this. Oh man, that is so good! That is so good. That's one of the best lip balms I've ever used. And yeah, it's I fourteen <laughs> Australian, no, twelve Australian dollars, which is it's like cheap. It's so cheap. Drugstore. And it's so good. <laughs> it's bas- okay. To be fair, it's probably like twice the price of a Burt's Bees, but it is so it's, good. It's that ten is... times better than a fucking Burt's Bees. It's anyway. It's Any, a Mario yeah. Badescu lip balm. Just the lip balm. It's yep. fucking awesome. I would buy it's this so good. in a heartbeat. Just as I, I recommend that to anyone who says what's a good lip balm, mm-hmm. Mario Badescu. Yeah, it's so good. Just I don't go buy lo- that. I don't love Fuck the scent. Else. I want them to have better scents. I want them to, to like really expand this range into expand. fun scents because yeah. I don't like coconut and that's what this smells like. Um, mm-hmm. But it's so it's like if someone said to me, if they said close your eyes and they put this on me and they said, is this like Shantikai? I'll be like, I believe it. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. How much is it, it. going to cost me? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so yeah. this is awesome. So I would definitely save a little bit, even though this is, not, again, it's not two bucks, but it's in Australia, it's it's very affordable. Um, for lip products, I would I would not go drugstore because no. I find that the color range and the longevity is just not there when it comes to yeah. most there are some exceptions. There are, of course, some except- exceptions to the drugstore. A brand that I would go for, and again, this is going to get out your pitchforks. Come for me. Uh, I would go to MAC. And that's only because yeah. I feel like MAC are consistently awesome with their lipsticks and lip color products. Not their lip glosses. I don't like their lip glosses. No, they're too they're sticky. Just, they're I don't passable. Like them. They're not great. They're passable. Yeah. They're matte lipsticks, they're sort of more um, sheer creamy lipsticks, they're uh, powder kiss, they're liquid lipsticks. If you want colour, whether it's nude, whether it's uh, bright, I feel like you can rarely go wrong with a MAC lipstick. And yeah, for me, fair. there are, I can think of a couple of key shades in different formulas from their ranges that I could buy for and like be happy with and for yeah. six months, no problem. I'm going to support you with the, you know, get your pitchforks out, come for me <laughs> comment. I'm going to go with, if I'm buying a coloured lipstick, which I would buy, okay, I'd probably buy 50 of these because I can't help myself. But I would try to not because I don't wear them, but mine would be Hourglass. Yeah. Those fucking... I do like them like, too. Those skinny, yeah, yeah. they're Confession, just ultra slim. They're so sense. good. They're so good. Yeah. I I love them. I have the biggest collection of them back here, and I rarely wear them though. Yeah, but but look. that's because I rarely wear coloured lipstick these days because my lips are so dry. They're like, mm. I know I put on this thing. This is from Lipstick Queen. Mm-hmm. It's one of the rear view mirror mm-hmm. lipsticks. These are these are like a solid gloss. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. basically. But I know that this is going to dry my lips out. Because anything coloured wow. that I put on my lips, I don't know what it is. They just, my oh. lips are like, no, that's too drying. <laughs> that sucks. It's not a, yeah, it's not a lip gloss or a lip balm. It's too drying. So I struggle with the coloured stuff. But yeah, I, I have to agree with you. Um, I think... When it comes to getting a lipstick with a really beautiful formula, mm -hmm. you have to go at least mid-range to yeah, high I agree. end. Yeah. Um, again, this probably uh, like is very similar to the eyeshadow thing. Mm -hmm. When it comes to drugstore, they just haven't really progressed all that much. They sort of reached a glass ceiling, if you will, yeah. with their formula and just went, oh, that's enough. Save the good shit for our more expensive brands. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of my really, really beautiful formula lipsticks mostly come from high-end brands. Yeah, so. and I think also what's different about lip products compared to eyeshadows is I do mm. actually feel like the more you spend, often the better the formula is. And I think that's yeah. often because they put more like, you know, lip-loving ingredients and mm. whatnot. So... Um, I would start at MAC because I feel like that's a mid-range point where I'm rarely disappointed in the formula. I might be disappointed yeah. in the shade I chose, like this is not what I wanted, but when it comes yeah. to the formula, it generally delivers exactly what I what I want. So whether yeah. it's glossy, whether it's matte, whether it's liquid, whether it's bullet, um, I'm very happy with my MAC lip collection. So um, that's where I'd start. But if you do want something that... I don't know, that makes you feel really special or that mm. uh, looks really gorgeous on your lips. If you've got dry lips or texture, you can go Lux and have a really fucking good time. So oh, you like you can spend you really a bit can. of product. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can go into the 50, 60, $70 yeah. range of lip products and just be like in love. <laughs> yeah. Basically. I would probably pull back with like nudes or shades that I'd wear every day and stick you need to, to go... like mid range. But then it, yeah. key colours that, like, I want to wear when I'm going out, I would dip into the luxury right. because, yeah. yeah, you don't want to use up a $60 lipstick in two months of everyday no, use. No, absolutely not. No, definitely not. I think, like, you know, if I wanted to buy a red lipstick, I would go to Hourglass mm -hmm. 100% because they have some absolutely amazing reds. And you might think, like, red lipstick is red lipstick. I actually completely disagree with that argument. <laughs> I think a red lipstick is like finding the right red lipstick for yourself is actually a process mm -hmm. and finding it in the right formula for yourself is even more of a process. Yeah, so, and I once agree. you like find that perfect combination, the perfect red for you can elevate your look. Like you go from Hayley the potato with her cider in a wine glass to Jessica Rabbit. Like Yeah, you can. And also yeah, what yeah. I what I like about red on a daily basis is that you can wear like a bit of concealer, low coverage mm -hmm. foundation, a bit of mascara and pop on a red lip and all of a sudden you look like you've put in effort. You look amazing. Whereas Absolutely. in reality you just chucked on mascara and a red lip. So yeah. you know it yeah. can really be a wow sort of product and I do agree with you the the thing that's really hard about lipsticks not only do you need to find a formula that you like and a shade you like but often when you find a formula you like it varies over shades so like correct the pigment that's used in the lipstick can really determine how dry um, how much something wears off patchy so you can have a formula that you Originally, I like this is amazing, and then you buy a couple of shades in it. And you're like, oh, it varies so much. So lip products are really hard. Yeah. Um, so they it's are. it's really about um, that's where it's probably best, maybe not in pandemic times, but it's best to probably get samples and um, or get them applied yeah. in store and wear them for a bit. Yeah, and try you, them. Yeah, before you spend your money. Ooh. But I would I would splurge on lipsticks, for sure. Fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. I would save on the hydrating stuff, mm -hmm. Ario Badescu, splurge on the colourful stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Okay, our last category is, of course, what you do to lock it all in or make it all glow, face mist. <laughs> For me, I would splurge on this. Mm -hmm. I love a good face mist. Um, 
and I do feel like, uh, again, I feel like, you know, drugstore gets to a certain level and your mid-range, your high-end takes you to another level. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would go at least mid-range and if I wanted something that was going to give me like a dewiness, I'd probably go with like a Tatcha, maybe a Becca before mm -hmm. they shut down. Um, and if I wanted something for locking, setting in, I would go Scandinavia. And Scandinavia are what make the Urban Decay one. That's the yes. brand that, that yeah. actually sort of formulated it. So um, for me, I would either go none, so just not bother and save my money, or I would go yeah. splurge. I wouldn't yeah. bother with save because it's just effectively fancy water in a bottle. And, and that's what mm. all finishing sprays are, but yeah. I, I've just never had really great results from cheapy ones. But I don't use finishing sprays on a daily basis. I do see the benefit of them. Um, I don't actually use setting sprays to lock in my foundation and my, my base because I don't actually find that they work very well. I feel like it's better yeah. to get a, a long wearing, sort of oil absorbing foundation and to set it well with a nice powder. I feel like that works better than spraying your face with hairspray. Hairspray is actually better than a lot of the setting sprays out there. So there's that It's trick. actually, she's not lying. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to a wedding or something and you've got to look good all day, a bit of hairspray, like just put in your hair and then be like, whoops, I slipped. Yeah. Um, that actually and works once, a lot better. Yeah, no, once or twice, it, like it's not a, problem. a year yeah. on a special occasion, it won't it won't, won't hurt you. Skin, You'll be right. fine. If you can spray yeah. it in your hair, you can sort of spray it on your skin, and it yeah, be that it big gets on your skin anyway. Yeah. Like when you spray hairspray on your hair, don't you get, get it twisted. It gets on your face. Yeah, unless you've got a shield, yeah. which you know that's a bit yeah. extra. You do you. Um, so yeah, I I I don't bother with setting sprays. I do, even though I've got oily skin, and even though I've got enough shine, enough dewiness, and whatever coming through. I do really see a, the benefit of using a finishing spray, which yeah, helps me too. Um, sort of bring down the powderiness. And if you do use a matte foundation, matte concealer, powder it all down, sometimes you need to yeah. add a little bit of more moisture to sort of make it look a little bit more skin-like. So I do see the benefit of it. It's just not something I do on a daily basis because I can't be bothered. So um, mm. if I was to buy one, I might go Shuramira. Yes. Oh, they're beautiful as well. Yeah. I might go sure yeah. mirror, but it would either be fancy or nothing at all and save my mm. money. And that would be one of those things I'd sort of slot in when I, when I have an urge to use one, it wouldn't be my, yeah. I need to get it from the get go. You must and, have it. Yeah. yeah. Another brand that comes to mind for me, which I think is actually an outstanding product and one of the best in their range, the Smashbox Primer Water. That stuff, that's my goodness, nice. like if I was ever going to buy a primer, <laughs> that's what I would buy. Like if mm -hmm. you were holding a gun to my head and said, buy a primer, I'd It'd buy be that spray. because that yep. stuff actually is really good. And when, so if you don't know, I trained as a makeup artist and when I was training, one of our teachers taught us um, to set one product, you use the opposite product. So if you're using a wet product, you set it with a dry product, but then you must set your dry product with a wet product. And once it's, you put, or you make the dry product wet, and then you let it air dry. And that is the action of setting it, mm -hmm. and that locks it in. So when you talk about face mists that are like, you know, like the Scandinavia one or like the hairspray one, like they're made for longevity, long wear, lock it in. It's like the Scandinavia one is basically like hairspray for your face, if I'm perfectly frank about it. Mm -hmm. But if you just want to be a normal person at home, you can set your base with water and let mm -hmm. it air dry and that will still have an action of locking in what you've put on. So yeah. I I also agree that the more like hydrating or um you know finishing sprays in many many cases they're just as good as an actual setting spray. Yeah. So, and it gives it gives a nicer effect on the skin as well. But it yeah, does, yeah. You, you can think of like a dry garden bed or desert or something, 
and there's powder sort of coming off it yeah. and then when it rains it it locks it in so it's the same That's kind right. of concept um any yeah. sort of mist can really help um set your makeup down even though it's not a setting mist and it's Correct. not designed yeah. to improve longevity it just sort of keeps your makeup on your face um and yeah. i just think it gives a nicer effect another one that's really good but they really need to improve their bottle mac fix plus that's also good as a Fair. primer and that's also good yes. as a, a way to um foil eyeshadows it's a it's a good yeah. versatile yep. product but their mist is just like yeah so i agree it is mm. their bottle is not good if you're a bit older like us or you have really dry skin the mac fix plus radiance is oh, a yeah. beautiful one the vitamin c infused mm -hmm. one so good but yeah like i think face mist is one of those things where you you more need to know what works for you yeah and then splurge a little bit <laughs> i also think Don't though bother. that similar <laughs> to like store. powder and those kind of things Probably the older you get, the more you need a good finishing I think spray. So. I don't think when you're think younger so. and you're sort of like glowing anyway and you're all bouncy and youthful, I don't think you actually need yeah. a finishing spray all that much. So yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I was bouncy and youthful again. I know. Fucking hell, it makes I've it got so much bouncy, easier. Nothing bouncy, nothing youthful. However, if we were bouncy and youthful, this video wouldn't hold much weight because you know. Everything looks good on the bouncy That's and true. youthful. <laughs> That's true. I was bouncing around using that Dream Matte fucking Maybelline mousse yeah. for a while, being like, this is great. No, <gasps> yes! it's tragedy. That shit is it's... a tragedy. But I thought that in high bad. school that was the best thing ever. It was fine. It was good. No. Exactly. Because your skin is fine. Yeah. That is the whole point. What's under your canvas is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a saggy baggy canvas, <laughs> you have a saggy baggy painting. <laughs> <laughs> Sums up my life. Thank you, Haley, for that one. <laughs> That's what cider does. That's true. <laughs> Makes you honest. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is it for us today. Feel free to uh, write your list down below. Mm -hmm. Foundation, primer, concealer, all of the things. Would you splurge? Would you save? Do you have some favorites? If so, let us know why. And uh, we will see you in the next one. But before that also please leave some suggestions yes. of uh wine time topics that you would like us to talk to you about because we'll make we a might list be here for a while <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> true all right guys we hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next one bye, bye.